The Israeli army has entered Gaza as of now. The Hamas militia was forced to surrender to the Israeli army by waving their white flags in their hands. The Israeli army, which controls the Gaza border towns, has kept the military buildings and checkpoints belonging to Hamas forces under intense artillery fire. As the mutual attacks between Israel and Hamas continue, the Israeli Special Forces Unit Sayeret Matkal has completed its first operation inside the Gaza Strip. The Israel Defense Forces stated that a large number of Israeli citizens taken hostage by Hamas were rescued as a result of an operation organized by an Israeli Special Forces Unit. After the Israeli army hit the airports in Damascus and Aleppo, Syrian and Iranian-backed militias fired rockets into the Israeli-controlled Golan region. These attacks carried out from inside the Syrian borders continue to be blocked by Israeli air defense systems. Israeli forces announced that they had carried out 20 artillery attacks on the areas where the attacks were carried out and stated that they would continue these attacks. In the same way, while Hamas forces are conducting airstrikes against the Israeli city of Ashkelon, these missiles are being destroyed in the air by the Iron Dome air defense systems. In response to these attacks, the Israeli army launched an intensive offensive against Hezbollah, which is located on the border between Syria and Lebanon. Israeli artillery units are trying to prevent Hezbollah from approaching the Israeli border by firing intense artillery rounds at Hezbollah's military camps and defense positions located within the Lebanese borders. Shortly after, Israel Defense Forces officials announced that all preparations for a ground operation against Gaza had been completed and shelters had been prepared for all Israelis. The Israeli army conducted its first hostage rescue operation inside the Gaza Strip. The Israeli Defense Ministry launched its first ground operation into the Gaza Strip after the announcement of the successful completion of this hostage rescue operation organized by the Israeli Special Forces Unit, Sayeret Matkal. The Israel Defense Forces said in a statement that they had neutralized a large number of Hamas militiamen and were forced to surrender. According to information obtained from regional sources, as a result of this large scale operation of the Israeli army, a large number of Hamas militiamen were forced to surrender to the Israeli army, accompanied by white flags. In this operation, the Israeli army targeted border towns located in the Gaza Strip, targeting areas used as military headquarters belonging to Hamas forces in these towns. At the same time, one of the buildings used by Hamas forces as a checkpoint was heavily damaged as a result of missile firing. It is said that an hours-long confrontation took place as a result of the Israeli army blockading one of the Hamas headquarters. It was stated that the Hamas militia located at the headquarters was forced to surrender to the Israeli army when no support came. One of the highlights of the operation was the moment when the Hamas militia surrendered with a flag made with a white bedspread that they were holding. The number of Hamas militiamen who surrendered is estimated to be over 110. This operation organized by the Israeli army was broadcast as a breaking news story on the Qatar-based news channel Al Jazeera. Al Jazeera reported that the Israeli army carried out raids in various parts of the Gaza Strip. Due to the mines and traps placed by Hamas forces inside the Gaza Strip, it was thought that the ground operation launched by the Israeli army in this region carried a great risk. However, the fact that the first operation performed had a successful result was celebrated with great enthusiasm in Israel. The news that several of the border towns located on the border with Gaza and the Hamas militia stationed in these towns had surrendered prompted Israeli citizens to celebrate enthusiastically on the streets of the capital Tel Aviv. While these celebrations were going on, intense aerial deconflictions between Israeli and Hamas forces were also continuing. However, these celebrations were short-lived due to heavy rainfall and flooding. After this operation, which was successfully organized by the Israeli army, it was expected that a full-scale ground operation against Gaza would be launched. However, the intense weather that suddenly subsided led to flooding of some border towns in the Gaza Strip, especially the capital Tel Aviv. Thus, 
the Israel Defense Forces decided to postpone the full-scale ground operation for a very short time. It seems that this ground operation launched by the Israeli army against Gaza has caused a major crisis within the Iranian government. Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi held a meeting with Saudi Arabia, which they consider an enemy after seven years. Ibrahim Raisi, who had a telephone conversation with Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, made an assessment of the situation about Israel and Gaza. It seems that this ground operation that Israel will launch against Hamas has led even the Muslim countries that are enemies to make peace again. Do you think the Saudi Arabian government, which has stated that they have ended the normalization process with Israel, would dare to open a war against Israel by cooperating with Iran? Shortly after these negotiations between Iran and Saudi Arabia, Iranian Foreign Minister Hossein Emir Abdullahian and Hamas political leader Ismail Haniyeh met in Qatar. The two sides met in Doha, the capital of Qatar, and made an agreement to continue cooperation. Hamas leader Ismail Haniyeh expressed that the Islamic world and Arab countries should take responsibility after this meeting and called for the establishment of a Muslim union. Israel and Iran have been conducting mutual airstrikes under the name of the War of Shadows for years. The Iranian government seems to want all Muslim countries to come together and form a union against Israel, although Iran states that it does not provide military support to Hamas. It is known that Iran is the biggest supporter of Hamas. Do you think Iran would form a large Muslim league against Israel to turn this war between Palestine and Israel into an opportunity? Iran's moves against Israel also seem to have activated the Pentagon administration. Former U.S. intelligence officer Scott Olinger, who has made many accurate predictions about the war between Russia and Ukraine, decried in a statement that the U.S. is making moves against Iran. The retired intelligence officer said that the aircraft carriers sent by the United States to the eastern Mediterranean were sent to deter Iran from entering the war against Israel. Israeli Army spokesman Daniel Hagari challenged the Arab countries in a statement about this issue, saying, We can attack anywhere in the Middle East if we deem it necessary. While the claims that the Arab League will be established are occupying the entire agenda, the Israeli army has increased its airstrikes against Syria, Gaza, and Lebanon. The Hezbollah militia continues to attempt to infiltrate Israel's borders through Lebanese territory. The Israeli army has declared a curfew in a four-kilometer area on the Lebanese border as a precaution. With this move, the Israeli army plans to target Hezbollah militias trying to infiltrate Israel's borders.